we got a country clipper in here i already drained the oil but <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and service this guy here oil is drained i'm just um i meant to grab the gopro earlier but i couldn't find it I already put a new uh, oil filter on it. Uh, this is a Kohler twin. These were pretty good engines. Uh, this is a CV23S. It is, uh, has 656 hours on it. 656.4 to be exact. One of the things we're gonna look at this, besides doing the grease fittings, I gotta go get grease because I ran out of grease. Uh, and apparently I didn't have any extra tubes laying around. Uh, we're putting in uh, 10W30. Uh, the, the standard is uh, for this guy here, uh, SAE, anything that meets these uh, compliances uh, according to the, uh, the Kohler manufacturer site. I usually go by what Kohler asks for and <clears throat> good gravy if it could stop with the choking so in the summer which is probably when uh crystal will be running this is uh 10w30 uh, we've already changed out the the air filter uh i use sten the stens products bought these from i don't I need to pull it out we got an inner like i said well we got an inner inner filter stens inner filter and a stent outer filter and hopefully now I can get this back in here. There we go. Uh, and uh, changed out the uh, the oil filter, dated it, and put the hours on it. Uh, the classifications that they're asking for here, SG, SH, SJ, or higher. Uh, and these are AP, SP, uh, and much higher than, than any of those standards were uh even 10 years ago uh i use super tech and you, know, you can argue with me about it and whatever you want to do uh it's a good oil just as good as uh valvoline in my opinion or uh one of these other ones but i use uh super tech for the most part for where everything they've been around since like what like 1898 or 19 somewhere in there uh and uh it's just a branded branded brand for uh for wally world that being said one of the concerns that i had was with regards to the hydrostatic transmission on this unit i am not going to change the hydrostatic transmission fluid at this uh at the service i'll discuss it uh one of the things that uh you know that you need it's it's not problematic for us so there's no reason and the fluid the fluid is full it actually looks like it's just a a little bit maybe a sixteenth of an inch fuller than it needs to be on cold so i'm not sure if the last person who who serviced it you know overfilled it or would top it off or anything like that there is some blow by that i cleaned off that was around it i don't see any leaks i've had it sitting here for for uh two days in the garage but you know that could be from the cap just blowing off the cap uh i will tell the owner to to uh, keep an eye on it. One thing that is uh, pretty crazy, at least that I thought was pretty crazy, uh, 2010, this is from, the battery is from 2010, and it's, it's an interstate battery, still holds a good charge. Too bad interstate doesn't make batteries like that anymore. Has a nice uh, ride there. Uh, the other thing we will uh, be looking or paying attention at, the, the other flavor that the, is something that's cool about the country clippers if you didn't know this uh some of their models actually come with a joystick so if you don't like the uh the left and the right stick okay <laughs> guy's tearing it up with that uh it looked like a camaro that went running by hopefully it doesn't wreck it uh you can get this flavor in a uh, in a joystick uh but we'll grease the fittings we're going to this, the other we'll grease the the spindles uh the other neat thing about this too is the uh the transmission cooler uh you, you know that's uh it could probably be 
uh, fan assisted, but it is a it's a nice feature to have uh, to help keep your transmission or hydrostatics cool. Uh, when I first picked this up, uh, the complaint was that uh, there just wasn't any power. You know, she would engage the the uh, the deck, and the you know I didn't even think I didn't even think about it, and I should have looked at it right away. So this is uh, this is like a. Uh, one of those things that you know, if you're a consumer, maybe you're overlooking. <clears throat> you should keep an eye on this. It will, regardless of, most likely hold a pressure. And the the what happens is, is as the as time goes by and the engine's running, uh, after so many hours, sometimes or uh, clogging of the the this will actually close. Uh, you know, it could be a dummy indicator if you want to call it a dummy indicator, but basically it's, it's designed to help the operator, uh, maintain the machine and get the, uh, longest amount of time operating time out of this unit <clears throat> before, uh, before the engine needs a rebuild or, uh, anything else like that. So the other thing we're going to replace on this, here comes Frankie, cranky Frankie coming down the street there. Uh, the other thing we're going to replace here though is uh the fuel filter this is uh you know it looks like a standard stens or kohler fuel filter i'll probably uh, see if i got something a little bit uh better than that maybe uh that i can put in there it doesn't you know it doesn't look terrible there's no reason for me to get excited about it or uh what what kohler typically had in there i think out of the gate was like the the larger diameter uh, uh fuel filter other things and if i didn't say this already we're going to look at is uh i believe that stick is actually out of whack when you uh when you're in neutral here and i uh, i downloaded the service manual for this but when you're in neutral it starts to drift back and uh that's no good uh you shouldn't have to shouldn't have to fiddle with the sticks uh one of the other things i was noticing too was you know like when the brakes when the brakes off uh you you should be able to put these out to the side and if you're on a flat surface not be moving backwards or forward um, <clears throat> so these boots i'm not even going to try to put this boot back in there uh this boot is definitely tore up uh so uh there, there's you know you either replace it or yeah you just replace it there you can't replace you know it's uh it's damaged but uh and this one over here uh, we might try to squeeze back in there but uh it's supposed to ride inside there and uh, obviously over time going back and forth it's it's not a not the best setup these get stiff and when they're cold you know they stretch out like uh you know like rubber does and then it uh when it's cold out it shrinks and uh, there's just not enough oh that one's broken too actually not enough elasticity in these to uh to make it uh stay with the stick and when they're brand new they're great and they're supposed to keep the dust out of out of the controls there and stuff but uh over time they wear out so uh yeah i'll, I'll upload this video and crystal will have this for uh memorabilia or reference or, or whatever more like i said we're going to take the tension off the deck here uh and we're going to remove the belt on the back of the pulley here and and we'll uh, lift this deck up here and get the blades off and sharpen the blades up and uh, put a nice edge on them and uh, and I'll get grease in the interim and fill the tires up as well uh, absolutely love this little guy that I bought uh, you know and I'm not I'm not an orange flavor guy I'm not a yellow flavor guy you know I got the I got the uh, the D wall some D wall products here I just I buy what works good uh, I even got some of the Makita stuff here, but uh, it's Friday night and I'm just glad that uh, I can be out here in the garage and uh, what I'll say is I definitely appreciate the uh, the grasshopper uh, and the ability to get the grasshopper in the air. This is a little bit of a, a ball dropper. Um, so uh, we'll go over this a little bit more, but uh after you release the tension here 
you should be able to remove the uh, cotter pins that are that are here on both sides and there's two pins uh, and you know try to you know you're not you're not if you're adjusting the deck height or anything like that you use uh, those uh, those guys there um, we're gonna pull like, like yeah, they do have a power option like a wind option hey hey you know walking in circles my favorite thing to do many of the year from cheap see if we can find uh what i do with that i feel like i had it on the bottom of the sawzall it's a hot mess of a garage i really need to uh get out of here and find something bigger what's funny is i don't know where this other six volt i bought two of these six volt batteries and my thumb hurts so bad i don't know what's wrong with it Let's see if the old mosquito impact can get her off there. Wow, wowzer. Good, uh, good sharp edge on there now. Only one nick. That I uh, see there, I could grind the crap out of it. And, uh, take a lot of the blade away, but she had told me that these were newer blades, so I'm not going to gouge them up too much with removing material. Uh, not only that, I mean, I do the old school bouncing. I have a little uh, Oregon tabletop bouncer. Uh, I don't have a uh, the other bouncers that I would like. It's like, I don't know, a thousand bucks or something like that with a magnet in it and the whole nine yards, but. Uh, I don't think too many people have those in their shops anyways. Maybe a few. I will buy a drone, waterproof drone before I do that. What well, would have been nice with regards to like this model here, even some of the newer models uh, with the country clippers, is if they had a locking mechanism to keep the wheels forward so that when you're lifting the deck or putting the deck down, you can keep those locked so they're not falling in your way. Yeah. yeah, and that's the part that that hurts. So, <laughs> yeah, ow, biscuits. Besides that, that hurt too. But yeah, yeah. I have a love-hate relationship with springs. And I could lock this in place with the dowel pen, I guess. But knowing my luck, it'll be just too short. So let's do that anyways. And 
don't have to lift the deck by hand anyways. Oh no, all right, well, you know, sometimes I'm wrong. Uh, ow, my knee hurts. I really hurt, smarted. That smarted some. These are pretty easy to put in. I'll wipe that grease off that now. And... Da -da 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 -da. Uh. <laughs> I removed both of these because for a minute there I forgot which one was removed. does not need to be removed and then we can lock this back in place uh, just to, you know be a little nice with it and make sure that it, it's lined up there and then, this is kind of a pain in the butt too oh yeah and I gotta I gotta remove the uh, uh, the pin over there stand on that and you usually get it under there too spring back here that gets in the way too when they're trying to do this which is a real pain in the butt and again like I said this is why I appreciate the grasshopper the grasshopper is great uh, Oh, that spring. Say that stupid spring. That's... Sometimes hangs it up. <sighs> Anyways, and don't watch me for half an hour struggle with that. We'll get it on there. And you think you got your got a good battery, and you don't have a good battery. So uh, yeah, it was this latch. You gotta watch out for this uh, locking latch here. Uh, if it's around the back of the bar, you will not be able to get that in the right spot to get it underneath the uh, the pins that are there. Just make sure you're in on both sides, and then you should be able to lift this deck back up. And uh, it's easier to do with the foot pedal. And at the same time, you can lock this. You gotta make sure you lock that bar back in place. Uh, I think I got it. We'll see. Take a gander at it. They're kind of a pain in the butt. <clears throat> yep, so you want that to be, I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can see that. I want it to be there. And uh, we should be able to lift it all the way up now. And put the pen back in. Four. four inches although I feel like four inches is probably pretty dang high but I guess we can do this as well man it hurts to smack your knee Four inches is, and you know what? Let's look at this. 
It's like three. And it's pitched forward pretty far. Two chords, which seems uh, very small for a uh, for a twin cylinder, but according to uh, what I have seen, both on receipt from the previous individual who uh, serviced this, and uh, also uh, uh, from what uh, the interwebs, Kohler's uh, Kohler site tells you. Uh, it's the right amount of goo, but uh, you know your filter is going to take a, a smidge in there too. So not sure uh, grab a clean paper towel. Should be enough for uh, the filter too. <clears throat> you won't believe it, but I just pressure washed the uh, the garage floor a couple nights ago. start it and run it here in the uh, garage and double check the oil Get the blades done, get the oil filter done, we gotta do the gas filter yet. I really put that uh, trans cooler in a precarious spot for checking oil, that's for sure. Yep, so we're gonna need to add half a quart there, at least. Maybe a little less, but somewhere close to. We were at the bottom of uh, that, and I want to be at the top. Yep, we're good there. So for those of you who probably can't see, it is right about there, if you can see it. Um, and once screwed in all the way, I check it at both spots. Uh, 
at top unscrewed and screwed in so we're definitely full and uh, we'll call the oil lube job complete on that part try to get some of my goo off there so I'll spot back in there let that drip for a minute or two um, So, uh, da, 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 da. just to show you real quick and uh, kick some of my stuff out of the way. I'll probably run forward, boy. Smacking that knee really hurt. So, uh, all right. The battery did sound a little weak in the knees there but if she keeps it on a tenderizer or a tender should say tenderizer <laughs> I'm making some meat uh, a tender uh, she should be good I'm gonna change the uh, fuel filter here somewhere in this mess of schmoo and spoo I have there they are uh, So, uh, yeah, I actually switched uh, vendors for fuel filters uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, I, I, I really like the Stens and Kohler branded uh, fuel filters, but uh, the the metal on the bottom of these so long as you have uh you know good gas you don't let let it sit in there and uh, turn into a shellac uh, actually holds up pretty well these can collapse because what happens is a lot of times people will not uh, service it regularly actually uh you know I'm conflicted either way. I mean, I, uh, I prefer the stands, but, um, that looks like what he's using in here or has been using in here. And we're going to, uh, go get myself uh, where am I angled? Tangled, dangled, uh, pliers. I probably throw them in the back of the exploder. Well, these weren't what I was looking for, but these will have to do. Ow, my knee. We're going out to explode her. Uh, yeah, we'll shut the fuel, clamp the fuel off here so I don't have it all over my garage floor. That is. was a little tight. This is why this 90 degree needle nose are great because pulling will part easier. And when I do this, I guess I should have blown that back in there, but uh, I usually put a little grease on these ends, bar bends, because it makes it easier for fools like me to get in there.
said, this is why I use oil. A little lube in these. Little lube goes a long way. <laughs> I was trying to put it in, put it into the uh, uh, paper towel there. Hi, Eve. Um, yeah. Now, uh, we're gonna go with the, the stems replacement anyways. Uh, I feel more comfortable pointing the finger at stems if something goes wrong, but, you know, it's used equipment. It is just something that I do because like I said, it makes it easier for me to take it off if I am lucky enough to go ahead and service this again. And if not, someone else will appreciate that I stuck a little lube on the end of that barb. Well, come on, there's... I can't get in there. And down below. Let the fuel flow. Good. It's uh, definitely a little hard to start there. I can hear it. Well, let's check the uh, spark plugs while we're at it. And uh, hopefully, oh yeah, I'll pull them. We we're gonna check compression because I told her we'd check compression, but uh, I actually probably don't even need to. And uh, the concern initially was because uh, she was having a run issue, but um, well, uh, we'll entertain it. Seventeen foot pounds. If you don't know, I don't want to pull the torque a torque wrench out. Set it for seventeen foot pounds. And she was saying these were replaced last season, so you know we're just pulling these to look at it, do a compression test, and uh, see what kind of shenanigans are going on. Yeah, I mean they're still white. I mean there's, I'm not. You know what? I don't even need to. I don't need to stick a, uh, and the porcelain's still white. That's firing very, very clean in my opinion. Uh, we can check the gap. I think if we can find, find that in here. Should be like 30 thousandths. Yep. 
Uh, we'll put a little dielectrical grease on the uh, the end of that and call it a day. There's a little cor corrosion, but you know, there's no. You know what? She had a pretty big yard. I don't know, guys. What do you think? Uh, what do you think the average lifespan is of a spark plug for a uh, for a lawnmower? I mean, we get a hundred thousand miles out of them in a uh, automobile. Uh, you know, uh, they are very similar in design. Let's pull the. Uh, this wasn't the one that I wanted. I mean, unless the unit's firing terribly or something else is going on. Uh, I guess since we got the spark plugs out, let's change them. RC12YC. Ooh, I need. Again, I'm curious what other people think uh, the lifespan or life expectancy is of, of these uh, spark plugs. Um, And RC12YC. Ooh, that one is squishy then. God, what a pain in my ass. Holy moly. First it was too far in, that was too far out. Too far in. Batteries are dying. No, so, thirty thousandths. We'll uh, <clears throat> pull this spark plug in. Oh, well, you know what that is, right? That is uh, a critter that has pulled some maybe fiberglass up into that. Still doesn't look terrible, but it does, oddly enough, I'm wondering if she's running it through wet grass that it's... Uh,
So I set this to uh, 17 foot pounds. Gotta get on it. Where's it? There we go. Can't miss that click, can you? I know. <laughs> Other people just ram it in. Uh, and they call it good. I uh, I always get a little weary of cylinder heads and prefer to do it that way. Uh, same thing with uh, when I'm reassembling them. Uh, people just ram them in, you know, put them wherever. And, uh, that is not the proper procedure. There is a light. According to Kohler University, I need to find uh, <clears throat> my dielectric grease, which is probably out in the out in the Explorer as well. So uh, let's go get the dielectric grease. grease was ever used in that. And, uh, that one feels really, really loose to begin with. That's a spark plug issue, isn't it? Someone's crushed that. And, uh, yeah, that's a, uh, that's a no bueno, thanks. That's a, that's a problem. Yeah, that's, uh, what's going on in there? That's phenomenal. That does not fit on there very well. Doesn't click in, doesn't snap in, which means in my opinion, that boot is probably scrap. I'll do the, and I hate to do this, I really do. I hate to do it. It's uh, it is definitely uh, it 
Definitely not good. I might end up, uh, this one barely fits on there. Um, and all we did was remove it. Hoi! Um, what's, uh, what's going on here now is uh, this has probably been fiddled with once before and I don't like doing these because they are very you're just I mean you're better off placing the replacing the ignition coil but an ignition coil is very expensive so um, in my opinion so if I can crush that in a little bit without breaking it that would be nice And uh, sometimes you can get those cables to come up and push the uh, the head out. Um, but in this case, I don't think that's going to happen. But you can see there's a little bit of rust in there. It's uh, another reason why I use dielectric grease. Yeah, that is definitely not wanting to snap on there. I feel it go on the outside, but that is it. It's not. It is not even trying to squeeze around that. Hmm. Yeah, you can see how wide it is. Like I said, I don't like doing this at all. Squish it in, but that's not what I wanted to do. I don't know if I can get it on there with. I didn't like that. Did not did not like that one bit. Didn't like that at all. I don't want to change the spark plugs on that one ever again. Shies. I mean, you know, you're just I can call her up and be like, yeah, hey, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not, it's not right. It's broken. And, uh, she'll be like, well, it worked when I, when I brought it to you. And all I did was, uh, you know, uh, give you the, uh, the unit and, uh, you know, he can argue that back and forth, but, uh, we're done with it for tonight. Uh, tomorrow. Well, uh, I gotta go get grease now anyways. Uh, uh, the only thing I have to do to it is uh, adjust the uh, the sticks. And uh, the service, the maintenance part is pretty much done with it. I'm gonna do the tires right now. Uh, I think these were like, uh, like 10, 10 or 20 pounds, I can't remember. I honestly can't remember. And of course, because the tires are so gooed up with grass, I can't tell either. I never 
understood why they think it's so hard to find these numbers. Should really make them brighter. This one's 20. Yeah. the heck so you set it for auto didn't seem to want to do the auto part very well so that could be part of the reason why our deck was uh, uneven too so uh. <clears throat> this tire I don't know is this tire and this ram looks newer that's for sure it says Supposed to have 20 pounds in it as eight pounds. That's definitely why our deck looked a little funny. And the auto feature is not working very well, so let's go to manual. Saturday morning I'm waiting for my daughter to show up so that we can pull her wheels to see if uh, the mechanic that she took her vehicle to for an inspection I guess over the summer uh, made a correct assessment that a tie rod end is is bad um, and we've been recording through some of this, this country clipper. And uh, the 
Uh, let me find my square. I don't know what it is, but that speed square. Doesn't it sound like me all the time? Um, yeah. I wanted to show that the deck actually looks a lot better now that we have it. I have so many breaks in this video is because the stupid batteries uh, that I had for bought, uh, which weren't GoPro batteries per se, but uh, were an aftermarket company. They started out great, and yeah, that's it's a lot better with the uh, the air in the tires. Uh, the batteries keep dying though, so. Uh, we're we're just gonna pull this outside here. It's uh, about 40 degrees right now, and uh, I'm I'm gonna park it uh, around back, I guess, to uh, just get it out of my way and clean the garage so I can get the kiddo's car in here. And then we're gonna work on the the neutral sticks. I went to Wally World last night, and there were no uh, no grease ca canisters left. Uh, so I'll have to go to AutoZone or Advanced Auto or somewhere else today to uh, try to get some grease. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's there's definitely something wrong with that uh, that safety mechanism. I don't know why that is, but I should be able to pull those sticks in. I should be able to pull the sticks in and not have a uh, have it bouncing around. Or sometimes it's a pain in the butt too. <clears throat> so we've done all the service to this, and this is uh, this is just an adjustment. But you can see I have uh, have this jacked up. When you pull this off, the uh, it, you know that's that's a seat switch. So that's why that's why that. Uh, that's why that's sold out, but um, uh, technically, this should be serviced every hundred hours, according to. Well, let's just go over this. Uh, according to Country Clipper. Uh, and according to Kohler, this should be serviced every 100 hours. Uh, sometimes that gets uh, that gets uh, ignored, especially if you have larger yards and uh, you know, and and you, know, you some people you know they they service them annually, uh, but it should be uh, annually or every 100 hours, whichever comes first. Of operation probably comes first that being said the transmission according to the hydrostatic fluid and uh, filter according to country clipper should be changed out every 200 hours uh, now that's according to their uh, their website that being said uh, it didn't sound like it had been done anytime recently um, but you know that that's uh neither here nor there now it's a used piece of equipment you can kind of hear a little bit of a little bit of carrying on uh with the with regards to uh to the uh the low end starting there you kind of have to have it at a uh uh full throttle and would and then throttle it down <laughs> And 
and you can still kind of hear a little bit of a tick 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 which could be a valve it sounds like it's actually coming from that cylinder over there which is the one that and i don't know if you can hear me or not but that's the one that uh had the problem but you can see uh they're both uh you know going in the uh the, the backwards motion so they both are uh out of adjustment for where neutral where neutral is at uh and uh that kind of makes it a little dangerous so we're going to uh we're going to adjust this out and uh the other thing that we're going to adjust those out according to country clippers uh service manual but the other thing that uh that makes that a problem is that it's a safety issue so i have an absolute headache and i can't stand trying to fiddle with this thing while i'm trying to do this but basically you uh you have to use two 14 millimeter uh, uh box open box uh wrenches in order to uh, loosen the jam nut <clears throat> and you must use the uh the two uh 14 millimeter uh uh wrenches because if you do not you can potentially damage uh this ball joint at the bottom and, and you don't want to do that honestly i probably should just pull the pull the wheels but we'll see if we can do it without the uh without pulling the wheels um we'll be back in a minute three on this uh i need to just adjust the uh the sticks real quick i had some bad information initially and and actually this is a lot easier than, than I had made it. Uh, so let's uh, try this again. I can't start this up. This side's good, but I just want to double check it. Uh, I did make a slight adjustment on this side, but um, we want to make sure that the other side is I think there's a little more going on to this. I, I know uh, this was bought uh, I didn't ask if it was bought new. Uh, I imagine it might have been. I, I will find out though. Um, but I, I'm going to say it was probably bought used based on uh, the conversation that I had with uh, the owner and she said that the the tracking on this had always been kind of an issue and the initial information i had was to loosen these jam nuts and and that's bad information um it's these jam nuts for your for your tracking and i i now have to wait till 8 a.m to start this up to to go ahead and uh, reset those because i don't want to tick my neighbors off it's uh 6 30 right now but we'll loosen the jam nuts this uh this bar should be going like this down onto your uh your uh lever for your hydrostatic so uh they're 14 millimeters we'll break those jam nuts and you definitely want to make sure that you use uh 14 millimeters and, and I already took the cover off on this side and it's it's very very easy to get that cover off uh, the the hard part maybe for some people is getting around getting around the wires and getting around some of the other uh, items in here to, to get enough leverage to, to break the, the nut free but uh, hopefully you can figure it out and uh, try to do it at both sides because, uh, and, and try not to do it without bending your, your choke or breaking your, So this here is actually your adjustment for that. And uh yeah, and uh and uh and uh um 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 but 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 ow son of a biscuit.
just uh, a little bit hard to get into. And I'm gonna, going to, gonna, going to, uh, do I get frustrated with myself? I'm gonna start babbling on. This was the side I was really concerned about because the jam nut is actually, or the, the rod is actually in the incorrect installation direction, which should be forward and down and not in the direction that I had it. So it needs to be forward and down. And then this is your, your adjustment for taking in the forward or backwards uh, play according to country time with regards to tracking issues. So we'll loosen those up and then hopefully this will turn fairly easy for me. Yep. And we'll Make sure that's as perfect as I can get it down there. Um, so these should be the only areas. And I would I don't know. I, I can speculate as to that already bleeding. It's not even seven o'clock in the morning yet. I can speculate as to what causes these to start tracking out of place. Uh, could be the stretching of the actual uh, mechanism or uh, 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 the metal itself. Uh, it could be the ball wearing out a little bit. It could be the hydrostatic wearing out that causes that to track like that. Uh, regardless, we'll we'll get it to, like, like I said, you know, that to me that's a safety issue. Uh, sure. I have to get the uh, cranky Frankie over here and although I was already in a distracted state he didn't help any any further I, I, uh, I love the guy but it's hard for me to stop and stop what I'm doing to hang out with him and um, He wanted to, I know, you know, he wanted to talk about his uh, sister's home auction that occurred recently. And, yeah, so, I go back up and look. I'm pretty sure that that's the direction. Let's look at the other side too, because So, down, and then, uh, look at that, she's bleeding like a clown already this morning, aren't I? I'm very superficial, I'll bench myself on this, this guy's sharp. Um, yeah, and we'll break the nuts on that side. Like I said, I'm not going to break the nuts on the, the top one. I uh, eh, guess we'll make that angled out more too. So, oh, wrong way. So that's where the tracking should occur. And we'll break the, and this is kind of a little weird too because this one on the side, for whatever reason, is a little bit smaller than.
we will make that more angled towards where it needs to go. So this guy here needs to be straight down pretty much like on a lot of units. They are not uh not hangled like that, but like I said we'll wait for the uh, sun to come up before starting this guy up and this thing will track perfect and I didn't have to pull the wheels off I pulled the wheels off brakes look good too so I mean that was just I didn't want to it keeps slipping off I don't know why That one there is not as I mean these aren't precision tools. I mean this is a craftsman and this is a Pittsburgh, but uh, they fit on the rest of these units. Alright, so it's just a little weird that that one is a little out of whack. So that's how you do the adjustment. I said, after looking at the uh, the manual a little bit further, I'm like, what in the world? I don't see that. And I looked through the parts manual. And as I was looking through the parts manual, I noticed uh, I noticed the adjustment up underneath the cover here. So that's very easy to get to. Um, I'm going to have to go through and, and edit all of my videos so I can put this up there. Um, yeah. How simple is that? Three 13 millimeter bolts, you adjust your tracking levers. Uh, no need to get in there and, and fiddle with uh, the bottom half here, bottom belt housing. All right, let's see, let's see uh, where this brake safety switch is occurring at. Because there's some debris in there, and I wonder if I put my foot under it. This really should should come all the way back pretty quickly. And, but it gets hung up on the spring a little bit here, so a little bit of a uh, engineering design flaw, maybe I guess. But all right. <laughs> 